In this session, we'll explore some Civil 3D corridor modeling shortcuts using the contextual tools found in the interface. Let's take a look. Now, most Civil 3D courses will teach students to create and edit corridor designs using the Corridor Properties dialog box. As an example, I'm going to select this corridor, and from the ribbon, I'll choose Corridor Properties. This dialog box represents a one-stop shop to do everything from creating baselines and surfaces to assigning frequencies and targets. In fact, if you right-click on some of these items, you'll find additional tools for adding, removing, and splitting corridor components. Having said that, if this is the only tool you use for corridor modeling, you'll find that as your models become larger and more complex, so also does this dialog box, which may lead to confusion for yourself or others when editing a proposed design. Today, we'll look at some alternative ways to model corridor geometry that do not require us to jump in and out of this dialog box. I'm going to click Cancel to close this, and I'll press Escape. For my example, I have the beginnings of a simple intersection design. At a high level, I've got an existing ground surface called EG. I have a pair of intersecting alignments. One is called Summit Street, and the other is called Barrington Avenue. Each of these alignments has a corresponding finished grade profile. I have also created offset alignments and profiles representing the edge of pavement for both roads. And I've defined curb return alignments and profiles to tie all this geometry together. If you're wondering how all of these items were created, down in the description I'll leave a link to a video that walks through that process. Over here to the right, we can see the assemblies that we'll be using. I've got one that represents a full pavement section with daylights. I've got another that represents a road section and daylight. However, it does not have the curb and gutter or daylight on the right side. This is the assembly we'll use in the intersection itself. I also have an assembly that represents the curb return areas. Let's zoom out. We'll pan this over. Currently, Barrington Avenue is using the full pavement section for the entire length of the alignment. Now, this assembly is perfect until such time as I get to the curb return. In this area, I don't need the curb and gutter or the daylight, so I would like to swap out my assembly in this area. I'll start by splitting the corridor model. We'll do that by selecting the corridor. Then, instead of going into the corridor properties, take a look at all of these tools that we have in the contextual ribbon. Tools for both modifying the regions and the corridor itself. Virtually everything we can do using the corridor properties dialog box, we can also do from here. I'm going to choose split region. I will then click inside my desired region, and I would like to split this at the end point of the return. I will then click inside this new region to the left, and I would like to split this one at the end point of the other return. I'll press enter when finished. Now to swap out the assembly, I'm going to expand the Modify Region panel, and from here I'll choose Region Properties. Before I click on this, take a look at some of the other tools that are available in this panel. When you get a chance, come back and explore some of these other options. After choosing Region Properties, I'll click inside the Center Region. From here I can see and edit its properties. I'm going to click in the Assembly property, and then I'll click the Ellipsis button, and we'll choose the No Curb Gutter Right Assembly. I'll click OK and OK. That's perfect. Let's zoom out. Next, I'd like to add a baseline for Summit Street. I'm going to come back to the ribbon, and I'll choose Add Baseline. Right here, I can give the baseline a name. I can select its type. Alignment and profile is perfect in this case. Using the menu, I can select my desired alignment. I'll choose Summit Street, and then I'll click OK. I can then choose the corresponding finished grade profile for that center line alignment, and I'll click OK. Once the baseline's been defined, we can add a region. Let's come back to the ribbon. I'll choose Add Regions. I will then click next to the baseline that I'm interested in. I will add the region from the end of the curb return down to the end of the alignment. I'd like to use the full section. Let's click OK. I'd like the assembly to daylight to the existing ground surface. I'll click OK. From a horizontal or vertical perspective, I don't need to assign any targets for the lanes or the daylights, so I'll just click OK. This looks good. I'll press Escape to jump out of that command. Next, we'll add a baseline for the northeast return. I'll come back to the ribbon and choose Add Baseline. Now, maybe I don't know the name of that alignment. Don't have to. If I click the green block, I can select this graphically from screen. You can see it's the Northeast Return. Let's click OK. I will then select the corresponding finished grade profile for that alignment. And once the baseline has been defined, I can then add another region. Now, I could do that from the ribbon. Or, if I right-click, I'll find many of the corridor modeling tools I need right here. In fact, I have more tools in this menu than I have space on screen. When you get a chance, come back and explore these options as well. You may be surprised at what you'll find. I'm going to choose Add Regions. 
I'll then click next to the curb return baseline. I'd like to start the region at the beginning of and then go to the end of the curb return. We will then select the returns assembly and I'll click OK. I would like that to daylight to the existing ground surface. And then as this sweeps around, I would like the lane to follow the right side edge of pavement of Barrington Avenue. And then I'd like it to follow the center line of Summit Street. So from a horizontal targeting perspective, let's follow the Barrington right side edge of pavement and we will follow the Summit Street center line, whichever is nearest. I'll click OK. And then from a vertical perspective, I would like that to follow the Barrington right edge of pavement finished grade profile, and I'd like it to follow the Summit Street finished grade center line profile, whichever is nearest. I'll click OK and OK. This looks good. Let me press Escape to jump out of that command. You can see how that assembly is sweeping around the bend. The only thing I need to do now is adjust the frequency in this area, and I'd like to add an assembly insertion here at the corner. If I select the corridor, I can come up and edit the frequency from the ribbon, or if I right click, I can get that option right here. I'll click inside my desired region. Let's increase the assembly insertions around the curve to every five feet, and then I would like to add an assembly insertion at the shift right click, apparent intersection of the alignment and this edge of pavement feature line. I'll press enter and click OK to accept. Let's zoom out, this looks good. Finally, we can finish things up by adding another baseline. I'll click the green block. We'll select the Northwest curb return and its corresponding finished grade profile. I can then come right up and add a region. I'll click near the baseline and we'll run that region from the beginning to the end of the curb return. I'll select the returns assembly and click OK. We'd like that to daylight to the existing ground surface, and I'd like the lane horizontally to follow the Barrington right edge of pavement alignment and the Summit Street center line alignment. Vertically, I'd like that lane to follow the Barrington right edge of pavement finished grade profile and the Summit Street center line finished grade profile. I'll click OK and OK. Last thing, we'll adjust the frequency. I'll click Edit Frequency and we'll click inside this region. We'll tighten up the assembly insertions around the bend to every five feet, and then I will add an assembly insertion here at the end point of this other assembly insertion. I'll press Enter and OK. That looks great. Let me press Escape to jump out of the command. My corridor is still selected. I'm going to come up to Object Viewer, and we'll click the Southeast Hotspot here a couple times to center that on screen, and then I can zoom in, and we can orbit this around and take a look. So the next time you're working on a civil 3D corridor model, try using some of the contextual tools provided in the interface. With a little practice, you can eliminate many of those trips to the Corridor Properties dialog box and take your corridor modeling skills to a whole new level. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.